Hello everyone. So now that season 26 has been added with the new GR changes that probably most of you have already gotten to experience and enjoy with those new maps and the you know more regular open maps and progression changes. I also want to talk a little bit about the Oryx Dream. So here's my first Oryx Dream of the season. I got it at Paragon 473. I know it's just gearing up my barbarian here. I wasn't even like fully set up yet. And uh, yeah, just blasting. This was like four hours in. And I have gotten something like, I think, 10 or 11 Oryx Dreams by now. So I've been playing quite a lot, obviously. And it seems to be somewhere like around a 1% spawn chance. Similar to what we have already seen on the PTR. I don't think this has actually changed. So Oryx Dream, a lot of people keep asking me, like, what is actually the difference? What does it do? The thing is, it doesn't actually do all that much. So what happens here is that this is like a low RNG rift where you can only roll seven different maps and 10 different monster sets. So I don't know by heart how many maps there are, but the maps that can be included are Festering Woods, Battlefields, the three new maps, the Cemetery, Fields of Misery, and Desolate Sands. And there's also the Desert or Stinging Winds map and the Shrouded Moors. So these are the seven maps. These are all like kind of like the most open maps, um, discounting Silver Spire that can roll really big and uh, nice as well. And then there are 10 different monster sets out of 33 in total. And they are generally kind of good, but nothing super crazy most of the time because there are also some pretty mediocre monster sets included. Most importantly, the so-called empty set that has Dark Berserkers and Punishers and also the toxic lurkers, the big spiders. So these are generally considered by far the worst monster sets that can roll in our extreme. And the fact that you can also get some of these like rather wide open maps, like here, the Desert Light Sands, it doesn't really hold up to the same standards as like a big four corner festering woods map or the new cemetery or the new Fizz Misery maps that are definitely another like tier above those other maps. So if you consider this to be like kind of like a dream map, it turns out that most of these are actually not really good enough to be actually top tier if you want to like push in those, which was the intent of making this whole Oryx dream of a rift in the first place. So what was the idea here is that these Oryx dreams are supposed to be in like really rare special maps that you can open. And then this is something that you want to push, you want to try if you are actually doing a GR push or like a personal best solo push. But most of the time they don't actually roll all that well because you have these mediocre monster sets and kind of mediocre maps that are just not on the same level as the top tier. So, so far I haven't really been doing a lot of pushing myself in the season. I will push probably a few thousand keys on various builds this season and we're gonna see many Oryx dreams there. But uh, I think in the end, most of the time I will not even attempt these Oryx dreams and it's going to be some kind of like insta quit scenario where, okay, if you do some kind of very casual push and you really just want to invest like, you know, half an hour into getting some kind of personal best on a potato tier, then sure, you can play them. But if you want to go for like some, some real push and you want to go with another one, two, three tiers above the, the typical easy limit, I'd say, then most of the time this does turn out that well. The main advantage really is that you have a guaranteed kind of open maps so that if you roll a good floor one, you will actually be able to go to floor two and progress and not instantly leave the game when you roll a keep deaths or a crypt map and you're at 70% progression and you're just stuck and can't go further. So this is kind of the main advantage of our extreme in my opinion, but the fact that you can get these kind of like mediocre, especially first maps, makes it so that most of the time, I guess, people that really try pushing will just quit them. I think another problem with Oryx Dream is that most people simply do not push at all. And even if they do, they will see most of the Oryx Dreams while farming, because this is what you do 95% of the time. You farm Greater Rifts in the other three. And then there is going to be maybe a little bit of pushing at the end of the journey for some people. But I don't really think that most will actually invest enough keys to actually see an Oryx Dream to begin with, unless they get very lucky. And when you farm with this, it doesn't really change anything. So when you're farming, you usually don't care about the maps. You usually have always the same time plus minus, you know, maybe half a minute or something like this every time you farm a GR. So nothing really changes by getting a good map or a bad map. 
this usually only matters for pushing where you know some builds simply do not work when you don't have like 100 monsters on the screen and you need this big density you need those big pylons you need to stack up those elites for the convert and these kind of things but yeah in farming this rng requirement simply doesn't exist because else you wouldn't be farming this would not be a farming build if you had these kind of rng requirements to begin with so I already gave this feedback during the PDR, but unfortunately nothing was changed for Extreme. It was just like you know, thrown in there. And maybe after the season, after a lot of people have actually experienced Or Extreme, there might be a bit more data, there might be a bit more feedback, and that will change something. But in my opinion, the number one change would be to just remove the two worst monster types from Or Extreme, the Toxic Lurkers and the Dark Berserkers, because this is something that basically no one wants to see like ever in a push because they're simply not great. They're kind of mediocre tier and maybe replace this with some other good monster sets, something like Lacuni Slashers that um, is actually a very solid monster type, but also at the same time, a very dangerous monster type that makes pushing actually kind of exciting. So you get big risk, big reward. And I think number two, in order for people to actually, you know, enjoy or extremes more or just to like, kind of have feeling that this is something special, there needs to be some kind of reward for it. So when you get them in farming, which is going to be, you know, almost all our extremes you're ever going to see, you don't gain anything out of this besides some clutter on the screen. And this is also kind of unnecessary. So there needs to be some kind of maybe special drop, in my opinion, maybe get like a guaranteed primal, maybe even get something like a petrified scream as an item. And it allows you to open an Oryx Dream on demand if you have managed to clear it in time, for example. So that you can kind of, you know, as you progress through the season, you stack up these Oryx Dreams. And then after a few hundred hours or so, you're going to have like 20 or 30 of these Oryx Dreams kind of like stacked up. And you can open them as a real like kind of like pushing uh, attempt that uh, you can do. So there might be something like this where you can kind of like, you know, itemize these Oryx Dream runs. And then you can use those to actually, you know, do like a real push without really much fishing requirement. I'm just tossing around some ideas here. So some cool extra drop that actually makes our extreme kind of exciting to get when you're farming would be pretty awesome because right now it really doesn't do much besides confuse people. And everyone is asking me like, what does it actually do? What is the purpose? And yeah, the thing is it barely doesn't do anything and it doesn't have a purpose really. So I think this needs to be changed, at least for season 27. I think there could be some cool updates to this, or this could even be made into some, you know, real like pushing game mode that is separate from farming that you can like, you know, open on purpose whenever you want on demand. And you actually uh, kind of have a separation between farming and pushing in some sense. So maybe such a pushing mode could have a different rule set for pylons. Maybe there's more pylons. Maybe you have different Rift Guardians or Rift Guardians spawn with extra elites and extra affixes or all the lead packs have extra elite affixes instead of just four, you have like six. I don't know. You could do some really cool stuff that really spices up pushing in my opinion with this Oryx Dream mode while keeping it, you know, separate from the farming game, separate from GR speeds and actually makes pushing more interesting. So just my two cents about this whole Oryx Dream system. Let me know what you think. Let me know how many you've gotten, how you felt about them. And uh, maybe you have some other cool ideas of what this could become in the future, perhaps with extra tweaks. So this is already it for my video here. I just wanted to show a few of these runs, give me a little feedback and let's see what happens. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more Diablo content and I'll see you guys next time.